and thank you for joining us on Future TV. I'm Linda Tamim and these are today's top stories. Interior Minister Nuhad al-Mashnouk heads an exceptional Central Security Council meeting to determine whether the security conditions in Lebanon allow the scheduled parliamentary elections to be held. U.S. jets bomb ISIL fighters south of Baghdad in the first expansion of the U.S. campaign against the armed group. And at least three foreign troops are killed in a Taliban suicide bombing in Kabul, one of the worst attacks on international forces in Afghanistan. Interior Minister Nuhad al-Mashnouk heads an exceptional Central Security Council meeting to examine the security situations in Lebanon and whether they allow the scheduled parliamentary elections to be held. The national news agency says the meeting focused on the security situation in the country ahead of the polls that are expected to be staged in November. Mashnouk demanded head of security apparatuses to provide him with detailed reports within a week to evaluate the security situation. Last year, the rival MPs extended their tenure until November of this year after they failed to agree on a new electoral draft law. However, the current presidential vacuum caused by a lack of quorum among political rival groups threatens the fate of the parliament. There are fears the political crisis and the presidential vacuum could also lead to vacuum in the remaining political institutions. So far, around 289 candidates submitted their nominations to run in the upcoming parliamentary elections. MPs from the Future Movement will submit their candidacies for the parliamentary elections before the deadline for filing for the polls at midnight. Most political parties have already submitted their candidacies despite the uncertainty surrounding the elections. Future MP Jamal Jarrah said the party will file for elections but dismissed actually holding the polls as an impossibility. The parliament has already extended its mandate once and chances of another extension are mounting. Several MPs have pointed out that security conditions are not right for nationwide elections and others have warned against holding the polls as long as the presidential vacuum continues. Soldiers from the Lebanese army have clashed with fighters from Nusra Front overnight as the militants sought to cross into Lebanon after suffering heavy casualties and clashes with the Syrian army. Reports say the Syrian army had killed dozens of Nusra Front fighters in an ambush in the Kalamun border region of Flita some seven kilometers from the border with Lebanon shortly before midnight. Security sources say some of the militants had been fled toward Lebanon, leading to clashes with the Lebanese army, which repelled them. The national news agency said a number of the militants were killed and wounded in the fighting with the Lebanese soldiers. The porous, undemarcated border region has been the scene of nearly continuous fighting in recent weeks, with the Lebanese army working to expel Syrian rebels after they briefly took the town of Arsal at the beginning of August in clashes that killed dozens. The militants from the Nusra Front and ISIS are still holding at least 22 Lebanese soldiers and policemen hostage. Parliament Speaker Nabi Habiri has welcomed the UN Special Envoy to Lebanon, Mr. Derek Plumley, at his residence in Ainatina for talks about current developments in Lebanon and the region. Separately, Biri also welcomed Lebanese Forces MP Georges Adouan, who stressed on the necessity of Parliament to approve important draft laws. Adouan also said Biri reiterated that the priority was to elect a new president. Lebanese Forces Chief Samir Jaja has voiced his support for Lebanon to enter the U.S.-led coalition against the Islamist State and criticized Hezbollah for rejecting the country's support of the efforts to destroy jihadists. This comes as Foreign Minister Gibran Basile and his American counterpart John Kerry discussed the role, in, the role Lebanon would play to fight terror during a meeting on the sidelines of a conference in Paris. Kerry and Basile also discussed the nature of the assistance Washington could provide to help the country combat militants. Ten Arab states, including Lebanon, have announced their backing of the strategy to destroy the group after a meeting with Kerry in the Saudi capital of Jeddah last week. The announcement drew criticism from Hezbollah officials who reject the coalition. A Lebanese citizen from Arsal who was kidnapped Saturday has now been released. The abductee Ahmad Hujeri was reportedly kidnapped by the Al-Qaeda-linked armed group Jabhat al-Nusra because he disagreed with their views. A security source says Hujeri was part of a group that was operating in Arsal in collaboration with the Lebanese army intelligence during the clashes with the militants last month. The militants also accused him of cooperating with Hezbollah. Palestinian businessman Mohammad Khalid Ismail has also been released two days after he was kidnapped for unknown reasons in front of his residence in Balbek. And coming up next, members of the Ukrainian parliament ratify an agreement with the European Union. More after the break.
Welcome back. U.S. jets have bombed ISIL fighters south of Baghdad who had attacked Iraqi soldiers in the first expansion of the campaign against the armed group. The U.S. Central Command said the attack was launched after Iraqi forces called for assistance, the first time the U.S. had used force with the sole intention of directly supporting Iraq troops fighting ISIL. Officials said the raid represented a broadened mission authorized by U.S. President Barack Obama to go on the offensive against ISIL wherever it is. This comes after a coalition of 30 countries, including Western and Arab nations, promised to combat ISIL in Iraq and Syria at a strategy conference in the French capital, Paris. British Foreign Minister Philip Hammond said the UK will play a leading role in efforts against the Islamic State. Hammond also said he hopes Iran will align itself broadly with the direction the coalition is going in. Well, I'm sorry if I created uh, confusion last Thursday. I gave a perfect uh, explanation of the government's position in relation to airstrikes against the Syrian regime. But of course, what people are talking about here is the possibility that there may be some action against ISIL in Syria at some point in the future. Um, I've said already in Parliament that would be an order of magnitude more difficult than airstrikes in Iraq for all sorts of reasons, military, legal and technical. But we haven't ruled it out. Uh, we haven't made a decision yet about how we will best contribute to the coalition effort against ISIL. But I have said this morning in the meeting that Britain is clear that it will play a leading role in this coalition. Uh, having a coming together today of 30 odd countries, including 10 uh, from the Middle East region, following the meeting in Jeddah last week, shows that we are building the momentum of support for the coalition and its objectives. Uh, in terms of Iran, I think it was always unlikely that Iran would become uh, a fully-fledged member of the coalition. Uh, but I think we should continue uh, to hope that Iran will align itself broadly uh, with the uh, direction that the coalition is going uh, and that we can expect um, Iran to be cooperative uh, with the plans that the coalition is putting in place, if not uh, actively a part of the coalition. Well, I should say that, of course, our thoughts and sympathies are with the family of uh, Mr. Haynes, and we understand that uh, Mr. Hemming's family are going through uh, hell at the moment. It's a terrible uh, time for them. We are doing uh, everything that we can uh, to protect him. Um, but they understand, because we've explained to them in uh, detail, they understand the limitations of our abilities and that we are dealing with a very barbaric uh, organization whose values are completely different from ours. So uh, we have to work on two levels here. We have to do what we can to protect uh, the individual in question, uh, but we also cannot be deterred from our strategic objective uh, of crushing uh, ISIL and the barbarous ideology that it is trying to impose on the region. At least three foreign troops have been killed in a suicide car bombing targeting a convoy near the U.S. Embassy in Kabul, Afghanistan, in one of the worst attacks on international forces in the Afghan capital in months. The Taliban claimed responsibility for the attack, which also wounded 25 people. Tensions have been building in Afghanistan since the disputed presidential election in June, with rival candidates still arguing over the outcome, despite U.S. efforts to broker a compromise deal. Meanwhile, most foreign combat troops are preparing to leave by the end of the year. Taliban insurgents have been exploiting the uncertainty, launching bombings and attacks on government security forces and officials across the country. Moving on to Europe, members of the Ukrainian parliament have ratified an agreement with the European Union, moving the country politically closer towards the West. However, Russian pressure succeeded in delaying the application of free trade rules between Ukraine and the EU. The Ukrainian parliament also passed a law that will give special status to the separatist regions, including a decree of self-governance for a three-year period. In addition, a law was passed that will grant amnesty to separatists who were involved in fighting this comes as renewed clashes have increased pressure on the fragile truce and raised new questions about whether President Petro Poroshenko will succeed in keeping his splintered country together. Twenty-two people have been killed in fighting between Shia rebels and government-allied tribesmen in northern Yemen since yesterday. The fighting in the Al Jauf province, northwest of the capital Sana'a, is further destabilizing a nation struggling to overcome a range of threats including a secessionist movement in the south and an insurgency by al-Qaeda. 
An upsurge in violence between the Houthis, who are Shia, and Sunni tribesmen this month came after weeks of anti-government demonstrations by Houthi activists in Sana'a. The Houthi protesters say they are taking a stand against government corruption, while critics say the Houthis are trying to grab power and carve out a semi-independent state for themselves in the north, an allegation they deny. In a separate incident southwest of Sana'a, sources say four armed tribesmen were killed by Houthi fighters. And now for some news around the world. In brief, six policemen have been killed and two wounded when a bomb hit an Egyptian security force convoy in the Sinai Peninsula. No one has claimed responsibility for the attack, but similar attacks on security forces in retaliation for a government crackdown on supporters of ousted President Mohamed Morsi are not uncommon in Sinai. Hurricane Odile has hit the beach resorts of Mexico's Baja California Peninsula, where it uprooted trees and smashed shop windows, sparking looting. The hurricane is one of the worst storms ever to hit the luxury retreats of Los Cabos and La Paz on Mexico's northwest coast. The U.S. National Hurricane Center said it was still likely to cause life-threatening flooding and mudslides on the coast. An earthquake with a magnitude of 5.6 has shaken buildings in eastern Japan, including the capital of Tokyo, but there were no reports of serious damage, and officials say there's no risk of tsunami. Air France has continued to cancel flights around the world as pilots staged the second day of a week-long strike, highlighting the trouble Europe's flagship airlines face in keeping up with low-cost competitors. Catherine Jude, director of operations at Air France, said she didn't think there would be a black day on Wednesday, as predicted by pilots' unions, and there would be the same number of cancelled flights. Air France says it will operate at least 40 percent of its scheduled flights tomorrow and extends its apologies to its clients. This marks the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our top stories. Interior Minister Nuhad Mashnu heads an exceptional Central Security Council meeting to determine whether the security conditions in Lebanon allow the scheduled parliamentary elections to be held. U.S. jets bomb ISIL fighters south of Baghdad in the first expansion of the U.S. campaign against the armed group. At least three foreign troops are killed in a Taliban suicide bombing in Kabul, one of the worst attacks on international forces in Afghanistan. Those are your top stories for today. I'm Linda Samim, and I'll see you again tomorrow for more updates. Tune in.